thank you very much. First, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me here today, and I'd like to thank the audience for showing up. And I'm actually a molecular, in my day job, I'm a molecular biologist. The organizers said that I had to keep the audience awake, so I'm going to talk about something completely different today. So I've actually worked in international development, specifically in sub-Saharan West Africa, for about a decade. And during that time, I've had an opportunity to see a series of tremendous changes occur. And I think it's providing some very unique opportunities for us to interact with the developing world in ways that we have not been possible before. So, within the context of international development, there are many complex problems that we face. The solutions to those problems are also going to be complex and they're going to be diverse. There are probably not going to be any one-size-fits-all solutions. But we need to develop methods and approaches to getting information out into people's hands so they can make the best decisions for themselves based on as much knowledge as they can obtain in an efficient manner. Now, when I train my graduate students to give talks, I always say, start off by telling me about the forest. Then step over and tell me about the area of the forest you're working in, the tree, the branch, and finally the leaf. And the leaf is the problem that you work on. The leaf that's given up here is quite literally the cowpea leaf. And we work on cowpeas and we work on leaves associated with cowpeas. Specifically, what we work with is dealing with the challenges of controlling pests that attack cowpeas. Cowpeas are a very important source of protein for tens if not over 100 million people in West Africa. Especially those people that live under $2 a day. When insects attack their crops, what ends up happening is people have a reduced income and in many cases have challenges with getting protein sources for that, that particular year. So we deal with several aspects of this. First and foremost, we're looking at better control strategies, but then we're looking at how can we get this information out into the hands of the people that need it the most. Now, coming back to this leaf analogy, our leaf is a cowpea, which is one given at the top. But in the other part of the forest, there are people that work with water quality, and that's their particular leaf. And other people work with issues of health care, and that's their particular leaf. But I would argue that all of us that work in these leaves in this forest face some common challenges and problems. The first one is, there's about one billion low literate learners on the planet. That's a challenge of getting information out to these people. They speak different languages, have diversity of different cultures. It's very challenging to get information out to people that are not literate. Many of these people live in rural areas, which means that getting extension information out into their hands can sometimes be very challenging and expensive. There's a challenge with associated with consistency of messages. So if I train somebody in a message and they take it to the next person, they take it to the next person, that message will change over time. And one of the fundamental problems with all these projects is at the end of the project, oftentimes extension materials are lost. So I can create all these wonderful extension materials, take them out, have impact on people, and then I do something different in my career, and that information is lost at the end of the project. Now we stick them up on our individual we websites, but the problem is, is how do you find that information on the web? So there are challenges for groups that want to deploy development method messages. First, to obtain those messages, obtain messages that are useful for low literate learners, to share those messages with other groups so you can increase impact. The only reason we go into this area is because we want to have impact. And then the other challenge is, I develop a particular extension material in one language for one community. And other people would like to use it, but there's a different language, a different community, maybe even a different accent that they want those materials in if it's an auditory-based uh, learning system. Now, we face another fundamental problem. There are actually a lot of good solutions out there in the academic literature. But taking things from the academic literature into low-literate people's hands, there's a disconnect that occurs. So this is what I like to call the learning equation. It's a simplification. And on the left, we have academia. And a friend of mine said to me once, he said, if you point a finger at other people, three fingers point back at you. So when I make this next comment, please be, be, uh, don't be offended because I'm criticizing myself as well. 
in academia, we're really good at several things. But one thing we're really, really good at is talking with ourselves. We publish book chapters. We publish baker, papers to talk with ourselves. Or we go to conferences and we stand up on the stage and we talk with other academics. So at that last comment, you can definitely see there's three fingers pointing back at me. Once in a while, we get this information out into the general literate audience. So we give, we give papers that are more for a generalized audience. We do press releases. But there seems to be something that we're missing in this equation. Hmm, I just can't think what that is. Oh, it's one billion people that are left out of this information equation. As academics, we're leaving out a giant portion of the human population. And if you think about this, this is absolutely incredible. So you feel, see the first plus sign. And that first plus sign is a very strong plus sign because we do have good extension methods to get things out into the general literate population. But we see a very weak plus sign for those one billion people because we don't have really effective mechanisms to do this. Our goal is to strengthen that plus sign. And I'm not saying we're going to do it all, but I think this is something that we have to begin to address as an academic community. How can we strengthen this plus sign so that the knowledge that we have can impact this one billion people? It's no news to anybody that in the last decade or two decades, there's been an explosion of the World Wide Web. So those in the literate community have access to all this information. As I mentioned before, I'm a molecular biologist. So these changes that have occurred in the World Wide Web allow us access to incredible amounts of information that allowed me to do my research far more easily. But again, here's the problem. This low literate community, for a large extent, has really been left out of this explosion of information. Now, in trying to solve this challenge, we face two major problems. First, we need to develop appropriate educational content for low literate learners. That in itself is no mean feat. We're dealing with different cultures, different communities, we're different, dealing with different languages, and in some cases when you move to different accent groups, people will not accept the materials from another accent group. Then there's the other challenge. How to share and deliver that content in a scalable manner. When I go in and I search the World Wide Web, type in a keyword, I can pick up items that are very useful to me as a high literate learner. But for low literate learners, it's not feasible. Just run a web search about something that deals with international development and find how many things that you can observe that deal with low literate learners. If you can find, more, if you can find very much in the first 20 minutes, then I, I will, you, you need to give me a call because you're much better at searching the web than I am. So how can we deliver these things in an economically efficient manner? Well, there are two dramatic changes that are occurring in developing nations. And these two changes are giving us the opportunity to strengthen this plus sign. First, in developing nations, extension agents and scientists are having increased access to internet. You go to field stations and you find people that are very well-educated, masters, doctoral degrees, that are working with low literate learners and they have access to the internet. They have materials that they would like to share with other people and they need to gain access to information that they can take out into the field so they can have impact on the individuals that wor they're working with. The second thing that has occurred is there's been a dramatic increase in the use of cell phones in developing nations. In fact, smartphones are becoming much more common in some of the poorest countries on the planet, and many of these phones have Bluetooth technology. If trends continue, there should be much greater penetration in the market by cell phones that have Bluetooth technology and have video capacity. So I'll talk about today two University of Illinois initiatives that dovetail together to address these issues. And of course, like all initiatives, this is a team of people that are working together to try and address these challenges. The first one is scientific animations without borders. The concept is simple. We take an idea that people work with in a developing nation that they know has impact. It's methodologies that have been used for years, but they don't have the money to scale it. Those are in turn turned into animations, they're shipped across the world, turned into animations. We do voiceovers in a variety of different languages. The next challenge is how do you search for them? So we developed a system called the Sustainable Development 
virtual knowledge uh, uh, interface, and I won't say that again, we call it Sustaviki. It's a system to search for this. So if I'm a developing nation scientist, I can go in, type a few key words, get those materials out of the system, and turn it around, put it on my cell phone, and take it out into the field and start delivering the materials. However, in the academic community, we realize the benefit of peer review. It brings a certain level of validity to what goes into the system. So what goes into the system is a peer review system. So we're currently developing a network of international scientists and extension agents who can provide that editorial and peer review process to back up what we have in the system. This just is an example of one particular animation that we developed for Mali. We went out and talked with the developing nation scientists this last summer and asked, what do you do that has impact? They said, well, neem sprays, and neem is just an ex extract from a plant. Neem is a, a, a tree that grows in West Africa. They extract it and they go out and spray it and they can kill the insects. We took what they did, spent a day interacting with them, produced a script, sent it off to Argentina, our animators in Argentina, did the animation, we delivered it back to the host country scientists, they verified it, and then we did voiceovers in numerous different languages and have shipped it out to a variety of different countries. That can now be delivered into the SustaWiki system and can be easily accessed by developing nation scientists. Now, we had a wonderful opportunity that just arose in the last several months. One of our team members started interacting with people in Haiti. People that were de 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 uh, delivering information that was important for the prevention of cholera. So we've been working with groups in Haiti to get standard information that allows you to prevent cholera. We've developed animations and actually signed a, uh, 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 a contract with an organization uh, to freely deliver all of these videos out into Haiti for the prevention of cholera. And that was actually just, just occurred this past week. So with the Sustaviki system, you can actually search for this and easily find the videos that you're interested in. Those can be looked at very rapidly, downloaded on a cell phone, and then distributed in the host country. So this takes a couple minutes from searching to downloading to I'm out having impact on people. I use my Bluetooth technology and it's out in the community. So the point of these two systems, they're dovetailed systems where it's first, how can we capture systems or approaches or ideas that are having impact on people so we can do it in a scalable manner and in a way where people that are working with low literate uh, learners can easily access this information so they can take it out into the communities. And one of the beauties with this is once we get these animations out into different groups and they want different languages or different variations on the theme, they can be those different language variants or even in some cases different accent variants can be brought back into the system. So for example, if we work in one country and they have one particular accent in a language and they're doing ex people are doing extension work in another region, they say, well, we would like it in our own accent when we take it out into that region. We can do accent variations on top of this. Now I would like to comment that this has been done fundamentally by a volunteer network. This has actually mainly been done by a little bit of money and a lot of goodwill amongst both people at University of Illinois and people that are spread throughout the world. And uh, we would definitely like to put spe say special thanks to all of those graduate students that have been volunteered for doing vo voiceovers for the different languages from the countries where they come from. And we also have to thank those places, or those organizations that have given us funding. Thank you very much.